Today, I wanted to show you how to generate the poll report uh, after a meeting in Zoom. So I've logged into the Zoom web browser and um, over here on the left menu, you have the option to choose reports. So there's two kinds of reports um, that are useful, I think. The first is usage, and this will tell you uh, who has attended the meeting and how many minutes they were present in the meeting. So it could be used like as a form of attendance or something like that if you just wanted to see who was actually present in the meeting, who logged in and how long they were logged in, that report can be useful. And in here, uh, you can just choose a, a range. I know that I had class on August 7th, so I can search for a class at that time. And then it's a little funny, you have to kind of scroll over, but you can click on the participants. I'm not gonna do that because it will show uh, the students' names, but there is an option that you can choose to remove duplicates, and I think that's helpful just in terms of the output uh, file that you get. Uh, the other type of report that's useful is the poll report. Um, you can do a registration report, but usually for our meetings, unless you're requiring registration for the specific meeting, it doesn't actually generate any data. So the poll report is useful. So again, looking for the poll report, I know I had class on August 7th, so I'll choose August 7th, I'll search, and then uh, I can generate the report here. So you generate the report and then it'll show a whole list of all of the ones that you've generated and you can download it. And I've created a sort of fake uh, spreadsheet that shows what it would look like. So I made up these people's names um, and email addresses, but essentially you will get a list and it's not super useful. It'll show everyone that's responded in order, like one through 797, uh, however many who responded to whatever question uh, in the order that they responded. So it's actually not super useful. Um, for example, we have Leah is one of the students here and Leah responded to that first poll as did these other students. Um, and then when we get down here, we see it's a second poll. They're grouped by time so you can see these are all kind of close to each other. So that was probably the same poll. Um, and you can also tell because it'll tell you the question. These columns aren't usually labeled, but it'll tell you the question that you've asked and then the response that they've given. So I use a generic poll that just says select your response, but I label them poll one, poll two, poll three within the actual text of the question that I'm asking. And that way it, it tells me which poll they've responded to here. So if you wanted to, you could um, potentially sort them by which poll they responded to and then look for each person's answer and uh, judge whether the answer was correct or not. All of that would be rather complicated. So the processing of this, if you wanted to actually assign credit for a correct response, would be really difficult um, in terms of getting it in any sort of format that would be uploadable into Learning Suite. But you can do things like um, just sort based on the username and uh, you can see who's responded to the questions and how many questions they've responded to. Um, you can see their answers. You, can, you could sort by username and then by the submitted date and time and that potentially will give you one, two, three, four, five for that person. Um, and then their answers to those polls. And so there's a variety of ways that you can mess with this, but I think the easiest way is just to say, did they or did they not participate in class? So assigning participation credit is relatively straightforward. Okay, so what we wanna do is make this into a form that is importable into Learning Suite in a way that we can give people credit for participating. So one thing that we have to do is convert the email addresses into net IDs. So there's a formula that we can use to get the text uh, out of the email address. It's here equals left parentheses c2 comma find parentheses quotation marks at comma c2 end parentheses, minus one, end parentheses. So there you go. That gets you the text of the first part. So that in our case would be the net ID. 
So making the NetID column will help us now. We can consolidate this data into a, a pivot table. We'll use the NetID uh, as our rows. And then we can use question as our column and it'll add up how many questions they've responded to. And when that happens, then basically now you have a column of net IDs and the number of questions they responded to. We can paste those in a new worksheet, just uh, pasting special so we just have the values and then we have our columns of net ID and the number of questions answered. And these can be used to give participation credit in your class. Okay, so that is a summary of how you get the poll report out of Zoom and how you can get it into a format where you can give participation credit in Learning Suite. I hope that's helpful. Have a great day.